I feel like it's kind of like, I can't even talk after watching the film because it's like, <laughs> it's like self-incriminating because like, I feel like. We yeah, don't have to talk. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, maybe we could actually talk about the, the sort of intonation or like the, the way of talking um, oh, okay. in the film. And um, uh, yeah, I think this afternoon you told me a really interesting story about um, how Amber, how you conceived this sort of cadence for Amber. And, uh, yeah, um, so when uh, Whitney and I wrote the movie, uh, um, the way that all the characters were talking were like for the large part just the way that we would tell any story or do anything. It was like very much kind of just like, like for example that part where uh, Amber tells the Bill Murray story, like that was me being like, all right, I've heard this crazy story, let me try to tell it to you. And then Whitney like wrote it down word for word with all the likes and like corrections and like, cause like I'm like really not a good storyteller. And that's what we, we also wanted Amber to not be a really good storyteller. So we were like trying to get that exactly right. Um, but to us it came so natural because we uh, grew up on the East Coast and we had this certain kind of cadence. Um, and then we were working with Ingrid who did a really wonderful job and is here and that's awesome. Um, and um, uh, Ingrid like grew up not in New York and grew up like in British Columbia and stuff. And like it was like what we assumed was just like, well that's how everyone talks. Like just like just do what, what normal people do when they talk. What's the problem? Like was like totally alien to her the way we talked. And so like while we were out there in Honduras and we were rehearsing through the scene, um, we had to really kind of figure out like how do you teach someone to talk the way that we do? And we were like, okay, so like most things that you say, they're gonna go up at the end of the sentence, unless you're making a point. And we like talked her through that and like went through all of the different lines trying to be like, okay, like, like trying to teach her like the sort of, what we realized was like a really sing-songy way to like talk. And so like it was like kind of like an amazing way of like, cause like me and Whitney, like Whitney's from Long Island, I'm from Connecticut. Chino, who plays Chino, is from Connecticut. Uh, Travis, who plays Jerome, are from New Jersey. And we're all like, yeah, these lines are easy to read this way. And for Ingrid, it took us like stepping out and being like, oh, like this is not like regular. And then like as the movie's like been traveling, we've realized that that's, you know, if it plays in like Europe and stuff, like they're like, why are they all talking in that really weird way? And so it's been like, that was an interesting experience about kind of like, you know, and people are always like, oh, the like, you know, when people write about the movie, they're like, like softcore porno, valley girl, cadence, like all this kind of like, that's just exactly what I talk like. That's exactly <laughs> it. So, there, so it is a kind of like, I mean, what I think is amazing about it is that it's a sort of artifice or, and that she's sort of alienated from her own yeah. role. Yeah, no, that was kind of a nice thing about having uh, Ingrid in the film and sort of like, I mean, kind of like, it's, yeah, it's, it's part of like our process in general is sort of trying to figure out a way to alienate the audience from things that would otherwise be familiar to them. Like whether it's like taking a story that maybe should take place in New York and like transporting it to the jungle or like all the things that we do with the silence and the sound and the music um, throughout the film. So like that film was kind of like our like demo mode of like alienation effects that we mm -hmm. could try to figure mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, so they, that was just like another one that was like cool for us because it kind of helped us figure out how to describe these characters more specifically. Mm -hmm. So on that theme though, mm -hmm. um, the way I come to this film and also to your other film um, or to your later film, the one that came right after this, mm -hmm. um, L is for Leisure. I mean, especially with um, L is for Leisure, mm -hmm. there's this kind of, um, when I'm watching it, like it's, it's like with a sort of tinge of like self-recognition and nostalgia and because this film is sort of set in 87 teenagers in 87 and then the other film is about college kids in the 90s and um yeah i think i guess i just see myself in it or whatever mm -hmm. but then um i was emailing you after and then or i guess like the first thing i did when when i after i watched this film was that i googled to see who you were, because that's kind of seemed like important or whatever. And then, and then I found out that you like were like a child in 1987. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. And so I was wondering about that distance and like, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
like we really like making movies that are set not now mm -hmm. and it's again I mean like god I feel like I only talk about one thing when I do these things but like it's like another way of us trying to be like you know like what we want and this is maybe like answering what you're talking about like mm -hmm. We identify with all the characters that we write like a whole ton. It's like mm -hmm. the only way we can write them and the only way we can feel like we can be critical and not just be like assholes. So like we really like 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 try to identify with our characters at the same time we try to think of ways that like how can we do a story about people more or less like us, but with some level of context. Mm -hmm. Like some way that like it's not just kind of like what it would be, like nostalgia or something like that, but rather like talking about these things like from a from a more distance point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, so like what's nice about us doing like a movie set in 87 or a movie done in 92 or whatever it is, is that like then you can kind of create a whole world and it's obviously not our world. Like it's obviously not mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. but it's also like kind of clearly like because of budget re restrictions and because of the way we work, it's also like obviously not a movie made in 1987. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. obviously a movie made in like the mid to late 2000, mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the aughts. Mm -hmm. Um, about a period and about like trying to remember like what are the specific things we want to talk about like we want to talk about coke we want to talk about like Reagan era like like um, Central American mm -hmm. politics like 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 we want to talk about like kind of like like early like 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 this like New York like club culture that we've got like mm -hmm. them talking about and so like us kind of picking things that are like all of these things thematically fit together as like strains that will help kind of us under put those characters into context mm -hmm. um, and like be able to talk about their whole world in a way that like if it was just like happening now you might just not notice because you're like oh that's just what the world's like. Mm -hmm. But it's also um, yeah it's it's true but it's also very, at least to my eyes, it's like very nuanced. Like it's not, I mean, there's certain imagery which people associate with the 80s or any other film, the 90s. But this is like, some things are so uncannily um, truthful or like, mm -hmm. like um, you just, uh, and so do you have like specific source material that you refer to or do you, do you are they based on, people you know or yeah, I mean these like both like this one and our other one they're nice because they actually happened in our lifetime mm -hmm. so like even though like I was like five when mm -hmm. this movie took place or whatever I had an older sister who mm -hmm. was like almost the age of the blondes mm -hmm. and like so it was like still my world and very much like the world of me and Whitney's like fantasy lives when we were kids yeah you know so like um like 21 Jump Street that they talk about so much was like my first exposure to like not Sesame Street mm -hmm was 21 Jump Street as like, oh, well, weird, they're both streets. Um, that, like, that was like um, kind of my being like, okay, this is what like adulthood's gonna be like. like um, and so like that was like, and I remember that came through my sister. And so like all of our memories of the 80s weren't us being like, all right, let's get out like a piece of paper and write down like 10 80s things, like, like you know, Urban Outfitters type mm -hmm. thing or something like that. But rather like us kind of trying to think of like what were things from our own experience that would kind of help like mm -hmm like evoke that era mm -hmm. in like, yeah, in hopefully a kind of honest way. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of working up to one, one question, but like uh, on the way there. Okay. Um, uh, so with the, there, another sort of theme in the film is like the character's class privilege. And it's mm -hmm. sort of, also, but it's also sort of rolled in with their, with their use and like in a way use becomes a kind of, um, yeah, it is in itself a privilege, I guess, and mm -hmm. yeah, and then they're like searching for the fountain of youth or whatever, and um, and it's 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 a. Uh, do you think that it's like the, like, and and it's blatantly American. It's sort of self-aware in its Americanness or something. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's like a certain obligation to address uh, privilege in filmmaking or rather than to like sort of uh like I do for us mm -hmm. I mean like it's kind of like our I mean like it's almost like our central project mm -hmm. like I don't know if I would, I would say it was like exactly privilege but like to make a movie that um both acknowledge like that doesn't run away from the like that doesn't w run away from topics that might be tacky to talk about because like, mm -hmm. like you can only kind of sound like an American privileged character mm -hmm. when you talk about them. Yeah. Like to like imp to be like, look, these are things that are interesting to us, and yeah, it's gonna kind of sound like we're assholes, and like that's kind of like, like that's kind of part of our project is to try to think of ways to like, like be present 
in these things where like we might not necessarily be the best voice of authority or the authentic voice uh -huh. you know so like in like there's like kind of like one of our constant problems is like how do you like in this movie for example like what do we do with like Hondurans yeah. like what do we do with like like where are they going to be in the movie and how do you like include them out like you know how do you like like rather than kind of like have a scene where like the characters like meet reality be like mm -hmm. no the whole point the whole point of tourism is that you don't meet reality right. like there's never this point of crisis and so like rather than try to like dramatize a sort of like you know moment of like fall apart be like no what's great about globalization or what's great about being an american is it's not going to fall apart like mm -hmm. you can like keep having the experience that you want to mm -hmm. have and like trying to figure out how to you know include that in the movie like the, the absence of these problems yeah you know and so i mean one thing about like them challenge. being being sort of hermetically sort of sealed in their own like ignorance basically is that the 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 cutaways to the to the nature scene sort of mm -hmm. replace like any contact with Hondurans or something like that or I mean at least that's there as a kind of escape at least for the audience I guess. yeah 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 because like yeah like otherwise the movie would be always in their heads I mean like yeah watching this movie now like a few years out I'm like man we were so worried about that because we're like always trying to find new ways to let the audience know that this isn't supposed to just be like a, a movie of identification with the characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you um, I think earlier this, today you were talking about like um, screenings in Rotterdam or the film was successful in Rotterdam and, mm -hmm. and um, like uh, how does the film go over with characters who are not or people who are not American or, or like who might not have grown up with 21 Jump Street or um, well it's like funny that like um like that in particular is like not a problem because it turns out like everyone grew up with 21 Jump Street. Mm -hmm. It's like one of these exports that like, you know, people mm -hmm. like that's they're like, oh, like I totally love that movie. It's so cool mm -hmm. that it talked mm -hmm. about 21. Like that happens in every country. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, I think that like the movie, I mean, hopefully does work in different ways with different audiences. Mm -hmm. um, I think that like here in the US, like we might be really like aware. Like, I mean, I was, this is the first time we ever showed it in LA and I was like, man, the movie talks about LA a lot. And like, like, like it must feel different for this audience than it did in New York where yeah. like like to us like we'd like like for us it was just like kind of this fantasy world that we were talking about um, and I think that like you know I like I think in some countries it's taken as a more kind of like um, cruel movie than we intended it because mm -hmm. they maybe think that we are like really caricaturing like a kind of American who's outside of us mm -hmm. um, and that's not our intention with it's the not. film, mm -hmm. you know, so like that's happened a little bit, and then other times people are like, "Oh yeah, that's like totally what Americans are like." What a cool, uh -huh. movie. you know. Uh -huh. So like, I don't know. We, people people read it all sorts of ways. Uh -huh. What about older people? Do they do they understand it or? Uh, I don't know about this movie, yeah. but because uh, I can't think of an example. But man, with El for Leisure, we were um, showing it in um, Peru this year. It was kind of a mess. Like the festival just wasn't going that great. And then, like after one screening, this old dude found us, and he was just like nailing it. Yeah, there's like, always that one old. Yeah, dude. like who's just like man, the coolest guy. And so like I don't know. I think it depends. We've definitely had like it's almost like sometimes young people don't get it, uh -huh. you know, because they're not used to. I don't know what, like they're not used to a certain kind of critical cinema or something. And uh. so they're just like, you know, I've like, mostly from young people, again, I can't think of a lot of reactions to this one, but with our movie in the 90s, like the young people sometimes make me be like, oh man, where they're just like, oh, it's so cool. I love the 90s. And like, that's the response to the movie. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, I was trying to say something about the 90s, and, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's like my older sister. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. All right. Here's my, here's my big question. Okay, got so, it. so. <laughs> There's this, um, I think that there's this like idea that people have access to the entirety of history now because like you can just like go back and look things up and then like, and, and that people should be aware of like the entirety of history and that, that, and there's like, you know, like people have been sampling for so long and like appropriation is just like what people do on a daily basis and, and, um, and in some ways it's like the in a way, it's like the onus is on young people to like deal with that or like to like figure out like what you can do with that. And in a way, like in a, a lot of times, like I think people 
like artists or whatever just like fail miserably because it's like a, it's like a terrible burden you know it's like mm -hmm. it's um it's hard to get out from under it and without being like trite or like you know it's like just like yeah without making like it's hard to make something good out of that burden or whatever and yeah. somehow i think like in the film that you've found a way to like do something with it or or at least to approach it in an interesting way and um I'm wondering if you think of that as a problem or if it's just like like a like a artistic problem or whether whether you think that it's just like the period we live in or I definitely think or like so on like a really practical level it's definitely something that we run into all the time especially mm -hmm. making like movies that are set in the past and now we're like making a western and so we got to think about it again um it like kind of like working rule that we've had has been like no internet when we're trying to figure these things out. So You're like, kidding. Yeah, so that's like the, maybe another reason that like all the 80s references might feel specific to you uh -huh. is uh -huh. because like it was all kind of us trying to remember our childhood and then uh -huh. all of the stuff about the Mayan archeology span was us like going to libraries and like it was almost all pulled from one real book. Mm -hmm. um, like all the quotes that he's reading are just slightly tweaked from like a real book by uh, 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 archaeologist named Thompson, but not E. Arthur Thompson, um, because we kind of feel like there's this, like, um, the, this temptation towards being, like, an all-knowing voice, but faking it. Mm -hmm. um, like, especially when you've got, like, a, a medium that's, like, as convincing as mm -hmm. film, where, like, mm -hmm. you can kind of, like, back up what you're saying with visuals and, mm -hmm. and audio and everything, and so kind of, like, seem, like, you know, like, if I just started talking to you about something, you'd be like, oh, he clearly just, like, read Wikipedia, but, like, if you include it in a movie and you, like, really do it, then that suddenly can become, like, an authoritarian voice. Um, so, like, on a practical level, that's definitely, like, something that we try to avoid because, yeah, you just don't want to be a kind of, like, culture surfy sort of, yeah. like, history, yeah. you know, like, you know, it's definitely a, a, a trend that we are trying to find a way to avoid while yeah. still uh, engaging with a lot of the same things that a lot of contemporary artists do, which is like trying to deal with this archive that we've got in yeah. front of us. Yeah. Um, so there's that, and then like on a kind of aesthetic point of view, or I guess a different kind of practical point of view, I think it's kind of like a benefit to the way that we work that it's un like it's so super clear that the movie was made by two people Really? You know, it's like, it's like obviously been like, you can see that like the, the way that the camera moves, the way that it shakes, not only is it like shaking, but it's shaking in the same way all the time. Like I kind of feel, especially in Alpha Leisure where you kind of see it so much, it's kind of like you're, you're stuck with a certain like authorial voice. Wait, two people as opposed to like a whole crew. Or exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it could be made by one person, yeah. but yeah. obviously not a hundred yeah. people, yeah. you know? So like, um, the movie, like in its kind of. I don't know, crappiness, like in, in the way that it's uh, like, like not a big production, I think is also a different way of like letting people know that like it's obviously not a, um, uh, like a total view of the world mm -hmm. or a total representation and that mm -hmm. things are like slipping through mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, the film is just lush. It's just like, I would rather watch that than like the newest. CG, like I mean, it's just amazingly filmed. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. Um, Whitney, Whitney did the did the shooting of it, and yeah, but like, um, yeah, it, but like, it's also obviously not super worked. Yeah. Is I guess what I kind of yeah. mean. Yeah. And so my last question is, um, so this afternoon we were also talking about Hal Hartley and our mutual love for Hal Hartley. And mm -hmm. Do you have any words to say about Hal Hartley? Um, you know, I, I just kind of to like go into what we were talking about, which is that, um, uh, yeah, Hal Hartley's awesome. And we hadn't, <laughs> um, it's, we were talking about maybe there's like, he's kind of like, like why, like, like why when people talk about filmmakers of the 90s isn't Hal Hartley mentioned as much as like Jim Jarmusch or somebody is mentioned or like why has he kind of slipped through the cracks? I was mentioning that like, you know, when you, when you like write a press release, you realize that 90% of the time journalists are just quoting your entire press release back when they like write about your movie. And so that's happened a lot with our last movie. And we always cite as like two inspirations, like ways people can talk about the movie is Whit Stillman and Hal Hartley. And every single journalist has gone with Whit Stillman for the point of comparison and never Hal Hartley, which is weird because I think that like from a working method, we're closer to him. Um, and it just kind of seems like he's like fell into some weird hole in history um, where he's just not kind of thought about a lot and it like I mean the way that I mean that he's specifically closer to our method is that I think he's like the only like 
filmmaker that I can think of who works in like narrative movies and is always trying to think of ways to include new kinds of alienation effects um, mm -hmm. to his characters. Mm -hmm. Like this guy's like thinking about Godard and mm -hmm. Brecht like mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And like in his early movies, he's trying it one way. And then like as he developed like through movies like Trust or like he's always trying like new ways to like make it clear that he's trying to talk about a certain mm -hmm. kind of character, mm -hmm. like these like working class, like outer borough New York characters mm -hmm. and never trying to just like present them as like as natural. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like, like he had the big anti-naturalistic project, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's weird that like that sort of strain hasn't, I don't know. It's like I, I'm just like who knows. Like in five years, he might be super popular again, and we'll be like, oh, like never mind. Like, Another Hal Hartley film, and maybe it's like tied up in legal stuff, and that's yeah. why he's not on Netflix. I don't yeah. know, but like, like that, like the. It's weird that he's not in more conversations about like sort of American film aesthetics because he's major. Yeah. Like I mean, when you see like Trust, like you're like, oh, that's what every indie romantic movie wants to be. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, it's just funny. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Q, are you stoned? <laughs> you talked about on an interview about film context, but besides that, like, uh, what is it for you to be? Like interested in this in stupidity? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, like it. A lot of times, it's funny. Um, the like, I think that what we're really trying to do with the stupidity of the characters in this movie is one kind of show. I don't know. I, mean, I feel like more like ignorance is the right word for these characters. Like, like. I really like that part. I still kind of get a kick out of that scene where they're talking about all the different assassinations mm -hmm. and they've like really got it down about all the assassinations, but then they forget about JFK. And that's kind of just like, like that's just a scene to me that's just trying to, I think enact sort of what we were just talking about with this like our own kind of trying to break ourselves away from access to all sorts of information and try to kind of like show off these characters that are like in one ways, like in some ways really identifiable, but in other ways are just like young. And like, like, you know, like, man, like I deal with undergrads now and there's just things they don't know, <laughs> like really basic things. And like one thing that like, I mean, like I watch like, like, like probably all of us, like a lot of like teen TV and like that's like, of course, like a major genre of TV. But like one thing that like very rarely they get is the idea that teenagers just don't know some things. Like the first time that you tell them something is like the first time they've ever heard it. And like we were just trying to think about how to include that into into a story. Like, how do you have these characters who are just kind of like, like things just like aren't in their worlds yet. Maybe they will be, but you know, like man, like I like like I think I'm a kind of smart guy, but like there's things that I just didn't know about. And like you know, especially if like you put them in a context that that doesn't include it. And we like I think that's what we were like. You're trying to kind of break away from the like, you know, that like just because you're privileged um, and like glamorous in some ways, like that when you meet these people, like man, they're just like there's huge gaps. And, like when you have conversations with them, like there's huge things missing. And I think that's what we were really trying to think about with the film. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, you all for guys. coming.